we put all of our, we deliver things in themes. Uh, each one of those themes has a list of topic areas for the next year that we want to, for the coming year, that we want to pr produce, uh, promote. So, for instance, uh, body condition scoring of views was one for this current year. So that's the message, and then we have to think of a whole host of ways of how we want to communicate that message. Is it going to be through on-farm events and face-to-face -face with farmers? Is it going to be through some rubber models that we imported from Australia and we took to the events and we got people touching and feeling? Or is it through newspaper articles or videos or webinars, whatever it might be? So just to briefly tell you the sorts of things that I, we put under those titles. So breeding's one of them. That's more about performance recording and encouraging producers to seek. So first of all, encourage the producers, the pedigree breeders, to record their animals and, and produce the performance recorded information. And secondly, to encourage the commercial producers to use that information when they're making purchasing decisions. So these are sort of, uh, we, we produced order of merit cards that were independently, they weren't sort of written out by the producer, so the buyer thinks, well, you could have written anything on that piece of paper. These are nicely professionally prepared. There's gold standard, silver standard, and bronze standard for the different levels. They're printed by us, they're sent out to the producers, and they're used as marketing tools. These are leaflets, this is a cattle one, sheep one, where we're providing information that individual producers can, if they don't feel confident explaining how EBVs work, estimated breeding values, they can use the leaflet to explain to the guy that comes to the farm to buy the performance recorded stock. Oh, and we also do improved herd awards. So each year, it's a bit of fun really, but you find the flock that's made the greatest genetic improvement in that breed for that year. And it just gives us some stories to talk about performance recording. And there's a case study of a farmer that we all love to sort of find about some, read about some guy that we might know or we've met or we've seen or we know where he's from. So it gives us stories basically. On the fertility and health, we, uh, we produce a publication. This is our, our um, wormer, wormer publication. So every wormer that's available in the UK, we, uh, we categorise it. We say which, which, which worms it'll, it'll uh, control, um, what the withdrawal dates are and so on. It's a product directory, basically. Um, and we do the same on, on beef. Uh, fertility is a big issue, so hence the body condition scoring, and we're looking at how we can produce more animals. Um, and you'll have seen some of these things down here. So just because it, I have a sense of humour, so we put our messages on what a little testicle-sized. So if you, this is about ram MOTs. You won't understand what MOT means, but in the UK you have to have your car. It's a Ministry of Transport certificate to say that your your car is fit to go on the road, and you have to go and get that independently done. It's a once a year thing you have to do. So this is a once a year thing you should do with your rams ten weeks before you want to use them. Um, so you kind of get the gist, it's the innovative way of doing it. Um, and the other one was talking about sheep, sheep mastitis. So we sent them a card <laughs> that looked like an udder. Hopefully you think that's an udder. Um, so that's, okay, they're not brilliant examples. I've got better ones, but that's the kind of innovative way you just want to sort of, we've also got a set of rubber testicles. So, uh, so Bridge at work, they, killed, they had to kill a ram one day, so they whipped off his nads, put them in the freezer, and for about a year, there was a bag in the, a bag in the Innovis freezer that said Chris Lloyd's testicles, which <laughs> was a tad disconcerting. And I have to say, they were fine. They were, that was just my name on some, something else. So, and then uh, uh, somebody started working for me, and we found this guy that made mozzles and things for Lord of the Rings, you know, prosthetics. And he said, yeah, I could make you a set of rubber testicles if you want. I'll take the shape. And so we've got the, in, the actual inside testicle bit, a, a life-size model of that that's rubber. And we made a hard one and a firm, a soft one and a firm one. And then they sit inside this sack and you can move them around. And it absolutely replicates what you should feel when you, when you feel your testicles on your rams. So one's got lumps in and one hasn't and one's smooth. And anyway, and you put them on a stand at a show and the farmers are walking along and they're kind of thinking about what they're going to have for tea. And then suddenly there's this pair of rams testicles just sort of hanging on this bloke's stand. And they can't help themselves but come over and ask the question, so why have you got some testicles hanging on that stand? And then you say, well, have you MNT'd your ram? And did you know that several rams, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you're often running on the story. Uh, feeding and forage. On the sheep side, it's much more about the forage, although we do feed a little bit. We tend to feed pre-lambing, but not really at other times of the year. But we're a grass-based industry. So actually, the, the messages on forage are really important for us. So uh, we've got some sward sticks down here. Uh, we've got alternative forages, soil testing, it covers a range of things. 
uh, systems and costings, this really should be the first slide, because if you don't understand the performance of your business or the finances of your business, you can't make really good decisions about how to improve it. The problem is this isn't the most sexiest of topics in terms of most farmers' minds, so they'd much rather talk about testicles than they would about the actual financials of their business. But uh, this is really important, but it is a struggle for us to engage with producers, and I'll show you some things we've been doing on that later on. Selection for slaughter, really, that's the end of the story. So we've got a number of market specifications, and if farmers don't understand what they are or the language that we're using to describe those market specifications, and when their animals hit that specification, they could be going over. So I mentioned about that 21 kilo limit on carcass weight. So if they don't understand that, they're wasting their money taking an animal to 23, 24 kilos. So let's just consider that uh, in the round. So it, it, this is my vision of how... KT works for us. We have a practical challenge. So 57% of the animals that we slaughter fit those market specifications. So there's scope to improve. So I would go out and talk to the experts, the people that select the animals, that know most about selecting animals and those market specifications, and I will say, tell me about this topic. I want to understand how we can improve it. So I'll absorb their, all, all their information. And then if we've got some gaps where well, we get the young guns in the R&D team to sit down and they see if there's anything out there in the world that tells us the answer to the, to the gap. And if not, we might have to do some research. That feeds into our research programme. When we feel we've got all the information, we sit down in a little bit of a brainstorm and we say, right, OK, so this is the issue. It's about farmers understanding the handling of the animals and what the market specification is and the language. So they're the key things for selection. So we need to produce things that help them understand that part of the question. So that will feed through our program in terms of demonstrations or manuals and things I'm going to show you. And we go out and we demonstrate that range of messages to farmers to improve their returns. So here's my little, we're going to follow that through. This is the language we use to describe carcasses in, across Europe, actually. So it's the Europe classification grid. So the, the, the letters Europe uh, describe the conformation, the shape of the animal. So the, the more muscle in the carcass, the E, and then at the bottom end is the P. That's the runt. That's the animal that isn't finished. That's a really poor one. And this red area really is anything in that specification, EUR, for shape, hits any specification in the UK and across Europe. And then the, the numbers indicate the fat levels. So one is the skinny one that isn't finished. Two is still lean, but good for certainly a UK supermarket. Three L is about, the, about right. That's bang on because you've, you, you're not too lean, but you're not too fat. 3-H is starting to get too much fat for our market and fat's a big lump of lard that you should have killed yonks ago. So that's the language that we use to describe carcasses and this is how it works out. We're killing about 57% in this green area, the target area. We're getting too many pushing over into this fat area. The orange ones could be okay for a butcher who can trim some of it off, may have some more traditional clients who like a bit more fat, but you wouldn't sell anything over here to anyone in Europe, they'd send it back. And these ones here, well, this is an issue we need to deal with through breeding because they've just not got the confirmation. It's not really the management system. The, you, these are things that are coming off the hills and the breeding is just not correct. So we set up a program. We've got a range of things. And I've just taught you through some of the ways that we would communicate just the selection message to producers. We take them into an abattoir. Absolutely important. This is the kind of, the guy that does this for me calls this the Rolls Royce of the message because you get into the abattoir, you see the live animals, you handle them. You've got 10 animals there, You'll, he'll go through them and explain the language and the principles of it, and then he lets you loose and you handle them and you feel them and you score them on the card. And then, unlucky for them, they go down the supply, ch they go down the, ch the chain and get killed. You look, at the, you look at the kill line and you understand the principles and what the abattoir is trying to do to try and demystify what happens in an abattoir, and then you see them in the chiller at the end. And they, then you go through those 10 lambs and it says, that suffolk -y one that was quite short and dumpy, we called it an R3L and you felt it over the dock. Now look at the dock on the carcass. And that white face one that we thought was nicely shaped, just look at that one in comparison to that one. And it's a really hands-on, really live um, way of explaining the message. And without question, we evaluate all of the uh, people that go through those courses and 99% of them tick the box to say it was excellent or good and I've learned something and I'm going to go home and apply something as a result of being in the abattoir. 
Farmers love competitions like the 4-H stuff. We have young farmers, and as they get old, they still love competing. So we always have a competition on the stand and get producers. It's a, me it's a mechanism to get a conversation going. We do if you've ever watched Top Gear, it's a car program in the UK. They have the cool wall, which is the, is, is the car cool or is it hot? And, you know, you're sort of Ferraris are up at the cool end and the Ford Escorts are down at the Ford Focuses are at the poor end. So here's our, this is our version of the cool wall. Uh, with the Europe grid. We get butchers to come and do demonstrations, so they show a fat lamb and a lean lamb and how much it takes to trim the fat lamb and how much fat comes off that, that lamb. And he talks about how he sells that product. So we're trying to get the farmers to realise that they're not just producing a product, they're producing food. A, a product, uh, you know, they're producing a food product that somebody has to sell and a consumer has to want to buy. It's not just that live animal that's in your yard and what it looks like and whether it's walking and whether it's alive or not, it's a food product and you've got to produce a food product that somebody wants to buy. And using a butcher as an intermediary to put that message across is really quite powerful. This wasn't just a name drop and we meet some flash people, but this, this is, a, as well as the rubber testicles, we've got these uh, latex models. So this is a resin carcass uh, and you can lay over the different fat levels so you can you might be in the back of a village hall somewhere where it's not really very convenient to have some lambs pooping on the carpet. So you take the models along and ha get farmers to come and feel them and you're showing them where to feel them and how it should feel. Again, it's lovely to do the, the, the Rolls Royce in the abattoir and have real animals on the stand and so on, but actually if you can't do that, if I was here today and I wanted to talk to you about selection, We've created this virtual program and it's, it's an online thing and you, you start off with a live animal and then you take the skin off it and then you can click a box here and an animal will appear that looks like an R3L and you can, you can morph it from one to the other uh, so you can go to an animal with better conformation or not such good conformation and you can do the same on fat and it changes, the picture of it changes and you can get people to think about the areas on the animal that will change as it's changing its morphology from an a underfinished animal to a finished animal. And then this just sort of accentuates that. So you pick an area that you want to look concentrate on. So say the dock when you're looking at fat, which is a really important handling point, and you can slide this up. That would change to numbers. And you can slide it up from one to five. And the dock will fill out and go thinner depending on what it should look like at that classification. And then in the course of a presentation, we'd finish up with, again, this point that actually what we've selected is an animal that has to be sold. And this, we then sort of show producers where all the, where all the cuts go and wh where all the different cuts come from. And we talk to them about the value of them and how we sell them and where the markets are and so on. And then again, for fun, there's a classification game. So it doesn't work so well on live animals, but, uh, which we do with beef, but we do, can do carcasses and it's against the clock and you have to guess 12 carcasses, and if it gets, I don't know why, but if, it's, if you get it right, you get this horse goes nay, and if you get it wrong, you get a moo, or the other way around. I, why we chose those noises, I don't know, but it's quite good fun, and we could do it with the audience, so we could spit it, and you could go through it and see who wins, and you can get two mates competing against each other, but while they're doing it, they're actually thinking about what classification is and what the different carcasses are. 